Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, we're going over five reasons you are not hooking up on catfish. Listen folks, I know how it is. You go fishing, uh, you put in a lot of time, a lot of hard work, getting your bait, getting everything ready, getting everything in place. You want to hook up when you see the rod fold over. But as all of you know, myself included, it doesn't always work out that way. You see the rod go folding over and poof, the fish isn't there. Either it pops off right away or maybe it pops off halfway back in on the fight. And you're left asking yourself, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? What could I have changed? And in this video, I'm gonna go over some things that could be leading to losing these fish. Some of them you can control and some of them you can't. Well, all of us like to catch big fish. And many times when we're fishing for big fish, we think that big bait equals big fish. And in a lot of cases, it will help you catch big fish by eliminating small fish. Now, part of the problem there is, is that a lot of times when you're using these really big and really large baits, they're too big for smaller catfish to take into their mouth. What ends up happening is some of these smaller fish will grab a corner of the piece of bait, take off with it, go running, pulls your rod over, but the bait is not all the way into their mouth. They barely have a hold of it. Catfish are engulfers and they try to engulf bait. They don't chew on it. They don't bite into it. They try to engulf it. What they will do is if they come up on a piece of large bait, they will take it swim off fish instinctively want to move off to an area away uh, from where they found their meal so that something else doesn't try to get it and then if it's a large piece they will try to spin it around so that they can get it head first that is the way they are used to eating a live fish out in the wild they will spin it around to see if they can ingest it now sometimes they can and sometimes they can't and that could be one of the things that is going on is that your bait is just too big for the fish that you're pursuing or the fish that took your bait and he's not able to get that entire bait into his mouth uh, it may pull the rod over it may look like you've got a good fish but sometimes that bait is just a little too big and the obvious solution is to downsize your bait sometimes you're in an area that just doesn't have really big fish and that may be your solution to the problem now another thing that can happen uh, when it comes to bait is that your hook can actually roll into the bait. This is a really big problem if you're using circle hooks uh, that are designed to pull freely to the outside of the mouth. Having an exposed hook tip greatly increases your chances of hooking up with circle hooks or with J hooks. But what can happen down there in the depths of the water as baits move and tumble and fish pick them up, fish do different things with them, is that that tip can get buried into the piece of bait or back into the fish. Now there are some tricks you can do with live bait with rubber bands and other things to keep that from happening. But the cold hard truth is, is that it's almost inevitable that it will happen sooner or later. Another thing that can happen with some of these baits, in addition to rolling back into the bait itself or into the fish if you're losing, using live bait, is that you can get a scale, especially if you're using cut bait, uh, if you're using any type of gizzard shad, skipjack, uh, one of these scales can get on your hook tip and that little bitty scale is just as detrimental and as bad a thing to have happen as having the hook roll into the bait because that little bitty scale can prevent that hook from getting penetration into that hook's into that fish's jaw and that fish is going to swim off and you're going to wonder what happened now one thing that can really confuse you and i've seen this for years and that is when you have a rod go slamming over and i mean it gets hit like a freight train and then comes flying right back up uh, you see this a lot in the summertime and uh, you see this a lot in the south uh, and the reason this happens in many situations is because it's not a catfish that is actually hitting your bait. It's gar. Uh, we've got long nose gar, spotted gar, and uh, they're notorious for hitting a bait on the run, taking it into their mouth, and because the way their mouth is built and their whole bony snout is designed, uh, it's really hard to get a hook stuck into it. Your rod will go slamming over. It looks like you've got a monster fish. You're like, man, this is going to be great. 
and about the time you pick the rod up and go to set the hook, it comes flying back. A lot of times this is gar. You start to see these bites happening, especially when waters warm up. Gar becomes somewhat inactive in cold water, so you don't see this as much uh, when the water's cold. But as temperatures start to warm up in the springtime, especially in the summer, I hear this more and more and more. And usually, if you've got gar in the area, that could be what's getting your blood a-pumping and then breaking your heart. Now, another thing that can happen, uh, especially if you're using a Santee style rig, or if you are using something like a Demon Dragon, a cork uh, that is on your line, is that the fish is actually never taking the bait itself into its mouth. Uh, I've had this happen many times uh, with the uh, Santee rig. The fish, you gotta remember, in a lot of situations are pretty much swimming around in almost complete darkness when they take these baits, especially when you get in water over about 15 to 18 feet deep. And a lot of times they are swimming in darkness. They may come into this bait uh, that you have there based on scent, but when what they may be sensing may be that actual peg float or that demon dragon, and they're actually taking that into their mouth. I've had this happen many times. Uh, these things will be pulled all the way down to the hook. Uh, with the styrofoam floats, they'll be crushed. And a lot of times, bottom line is they're just not taking the bait into their mouth. The same thing can happen if you're fishing on the bottom and you've got baits laying on the bottom and say you're fishing an area that has mussels or snails in it. And these fish are rooting around in these silty bottoms there for mussels and snails. They come across close to what is your bait, grab your line, pick up your line, and the bait is not actually in their mouth. So. It can happen, it's not always your hook's fault, and it's not always your fault that you don't get hooked up with the fish. Now another little creature out there that can cause some problems, especially in warmer temperatures, and especially if you are fishing shallow or up near the bank, uh, there's another little creature out there swimming around that can cause some problems. Usually the bite is not as violent as it is with a gar bite, but uh, you may think you have a fish, and if you actually hook up with them, you'll really get your heart broken uh, when you actually get lay eyes on it because they pull pretty good and in some dark water they can look like a really massive flathead. And what I'm talking about are turtles. Turtles are another little critter that swims around there that will give you something that looks like a catfish bite in many cases. Sometimes they hit it and take off with it quickly. Sometimes they pick it up and just kind of walk off with it kind of slow. Uh, and any of you guys have fished long enough and you've hooked into one and you think you've got a good fish, especially if it's a big one, and you get it near the boat and you can see that brown down there in the water and you think you've got that monster flathead only to find out that it's a turtle. And uh, they can be uh, fun to get off the hook to say the least. But that's another little thing out there that can give you the impression that you're hooking into a fish, but it turns out it's not actually a fish that you're losing. I'm going to give you a bonus one. We're actually going to have six instead of five. So uh, this one, uh, I've seen this happen, especially now that I'm doing a lot of guide trips and I've got people on the boat, some of them who are very inexperienced anglers uh, or have very limited experience fishing for catfish. And that is actually pulling the hook loose out of the fish's mouth. I've seen uh, some guys that do some really horrendously strong and powerful hook sets. And... Uh, the truth is there's no reason to do that with a uh, catfish. Uh, absolutely no reason at all. Catfish have a very soft mouth. They do have a bony edge, but you are not driving a hook into that bony edge of their mouth. You are driving it into the soft tissue. And a well-sharpened hook, especially a circle hook or a J hook, will penetrate that without much of a hook set. You don't really need to be rearing back. A lot of times, uh, catfish will get barely hooked in the corners of their mouth, around their whiskers. We call them being whisker hooked. And uh, a lot of times, I have seen people with really powerful hook sets pulling these hooks, ripping them out of their mouth. So keep in mind, you don't have to come in there with a big uh, bass fishing hook set to uh, uh, hook one of these fish, especially if you're using braid. Uh, I know a lot of guys like to use braid. They feel it gives them more security. Uh, but braid has no stretch and no give. And it's very easy to bust a hook out of a fish's mouth when you are using braided line. So uh, if you choose to use it, just beware that you may be pulling some hooks out of some fish. 
Well guys, hopefully that gives you a little info that will at least make you feel better and maybe answer some questions and help you understand that what you're doing is probably not your fault uh, in a lot of these situations, uh, that it's out of your control and it's just fishing. That is the way fishing goes. Uh, we can't catch every fish that takes our bait. That is the beauty of uh, the sport. Uh, it is the beauty of uh, using sporting means to fish uh, because those rewards that you get when you catch a fish make losing all those fish somehow worth it. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No. No, do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.